Glad you could join me today for a CUDA worksheet tutorial on the law of cosines. Law of cosines is a bit of a bear. Uh, you're gonna see that you can come up with a bunch of different law of cosine formulas that you'll see. Some of them will have b squared on one side, another one will have a c squared on the other side. I just think that it's best to stick with one and I'm gonna show you how to use just one so you don't have to memorize a bunch, okay? So that's the law of cosines. We're gonna go ahead and show how to use it. Now, what are we looking for? What we look for is very important to how we use this law of cosines. So it says find AB, AB is this side. Okay, so if we're looking for this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to relabel this triangle. I don't want, I don't want it to look like this. I'm gonna say, hey, okay, I don't want that to be C, I don't want that to be A, and I don't want that to be B. They're like, what, can you do that? Yeah, you can relabel it, that's fine. It's, it's no big deal. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relabel this and I'm gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this little a, and then it doesn't matter what the other two, I'll just call this B and C. Now, why does it not, oh, sorry, uh, this would make this little c, and this would make that little b. Now, why is it important that I call this A? Well, I like sticking with this one formula. I don't like memorizing all the different formulas that you have. So what I do is anytime I'm looking for a given side, I want that side to be called A, and then that's the one I'm gonna be solving for. Anytime I'm looking for a particular angle, well then I wanna call that big A, okay? And then big A is what I would be solving for. But let's say, let's say I wanna uh, just solve for A here, this side. Well, it's important that I have to have the opposite angle given. If you're looking for a side, you have to have this angle given, otherwise you don't have enough information to use the law of cosines, okay? So with this in place and this relabeled, what I do here is just plug in. So I'm looking for A squared, and then what do I have already established? Well, I know that I have B squared, I'm gonna plug in B, that's 13, squared, plus C squared, that's 29, squared, minus two times uh, B times C, 29, times cosine of A, cosine of 41. So you can see here, I have A by itself, and now it's just a matter of using my calculator. Law of cosines to me is not the coolest thing. I mean, I'm glad we have it available as a resource, but um, it's just a, a, such a bear to do. Uh, yeah, it really kind of drags me down. So 169 plus 29 squared, just step by step. I'm showing you step by step here. If you have a nice graphing calculator, you can be kind of careful how you do this and do it all in one go but not recommended for beginners. 754 times cosine of 41, which I'll type in just so you can see what it is. Make sure you're in degree mode. It's about 0 0.7547, and that's equal to A squared. Now I'm just simplifying here, so I have 841 plus 169. Okay, I'll show you this step in red. So I did this and I get 1010 minus, I'm gonna do 754 times 0.7547. I get 569.0438. Oh, I should really do this. This times 754. If I can, I like to use the whole stored thing, not the, I only put four decimal places. And then when I multiplied it, I got something a little bit different. If you round, you're gonna have a little bit different answers, so I'm not gonna round. This is what I have on my calculator. That's Now that's rounded to four decimal places, but I'm just saying you're getting a, a slightly different answer than if uh, you don't do it that way. Okay, first off, let me change this to purple. I don't know why I keep changing I like keeping this one consistent. A squared, A squared. Okay, so that was those two pieces. Now I simply subtract one from the other. So I'm gonna do 110 minus 50, uh, 569, blah, 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 blah. And what do I get? I get A squared equals 440.9489. Okay, 9489. And actually that's gonna round up a little bit. I'll put the seven in there, six. <laughs> All right, now I take the square root of that whole thing. Now, that, I'm just writing the decimals um, a little bit rounded for this. 
I just leave it as is in my calculator. So I get take the square root and I get 20.998. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Well, if I round this to the nearest tenth, it's going to round this up to 21. So A equals 21.0. So now I found A and it's 21. There's my answer. Da, 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 da. So now you can see that's how law of cosines is used. That's the basics of it. And as you do it more often, you can get a little faster, but really it's hard to really go fast in uh, law of cosines. Let's do it again. And just so you get the idea of it, uh, let's find BC in this one. That's that side. Um, this one's already labeled as A, so that's good. Because remember, we want little a to be the side that we're trying to find, and we want big A to be the angle that we're given. So now we have all the things already inputted. We have a squared, that's what we're looking for, equals, and I'm just going to go, I'm going to do it as I go. I get 9 squared. Now it doesn't matter which one I call b and c, it really doesn't. So I'm going to call this 81 plus 14 squared is 196 minus, and now I'm going to type in 2 times 14 times 9, and I get 252. And then this is times the cosine of 17 times, which is about 0 0.956. Now that's rounded. I'm having the whole thing stored on my calculator. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm multiplying that by 252 to get minus 240.988. Again, that's rounded. I have the whole thing stored. I'm going to subtract this from 196 and 81, and I get a squared equals 36.0112. Okay, you get the idea. I'm only writing a couple decimal places, and I get a, when I take the square root of both sides, I get a equals 6.000. How about that? Round to the nearest tenth, it's gonna be a equals 0 0.6. Did I say 0 0.6? I meant 6.0. You guys know what I mean, 6.0. Okay, so there's that 